all right well I'm gonna show you the underside of the solar system now I just got it all wired up this is my battery bank I have four six volt batteries these two six volt batteries right here are connected in series with this wire right here and I changed that wire out to a one aught wire so it'll carry all the current I need it to and that system right there is um, a 12 volt battery I did the same to this system over here you can see the two batteries are connected in series which multiplies those volts or adds those volts six volts each into a 12 volt battery and that is a 12 volt battery and then what you do is you take the two batteries and you can make it put it in series or a parallel so I parallel these two battery banks together with the negative positive to the or negative to the negative and that one positive to the positive and those two batteries are connected together banks so you have two 12 volt batteries connected together in parallel and that actually amplifies the amps of the batteries each battery is 225 amp hours that's a lot these are solid AGM solid uh, sealed lead acid batteries they don't vent only under extreme circumstances so uh, it's actually pretty cool uh, they're 225 amp hours each so when you put them in series those 225 amp hours stay the same and you add the volts then when I parallel the two systems the 225 amp hours comes out to 450 amp hours so I have 450 amp hours of power to use now I don't really want to run it down below 50% so that really means I have 225 amp hours available now let me let me show you something when you end up connecting all kinds of power cords to your batteries I ended up the bolts that go into the top of the battery those little bolts right there were not long enough they were like really short and I needed a really long bolt so what I found that I thought was really clever see this one it connects one of my 40 amp solar, solar controller this one right here connects my inverter which is inside this one connects my um, solar panels and back and this one parallels goes to the negative this one parallels my batteries so you have this system right here it's called a cat 5 they have five connections one two three four and five and of course you screw it down in the middle so you don't have to worry about trying to uh, make a have a long bolt and these are really cool because all you do is you can just twist this little baby off just like that and twist it right back on so that's really cool so I have one of those on the negative and if you come over here you're gonna see the same thing on the positive where I have five connections on this little cat 5 system it's called cat 5 I guess it's called kat 5 because you can have five connections now they also sell ones with three connections but I needed five so I got this one but really nice little system a really nice little setup for the batteries okay anytime you run power to from the battery you got to make sure you either fuse it I don't like fuses too much I like the uh, the uh, circuit breakers so this is a circuit breaker right here it's a 300 amp circuit breaker and you basically run it on the positive side of the battery cable so this 300 amp circuit breaker goes to my inverter so even though the wires are black they only sold black so if it's a three gauge wire so it comes from the inverter down here and then from down here it goes into the battery so you can see that the battery has a uh, um, has a uh, yeah it comes down here through the battery from the inverter and it goes here into the battery the positive battery and then down here I have a 100 amp inverter or uh, circuit breaker you can see right here 100 amp and that protects my 100 amp that protects my batteries in case there's a short or something in my uh, charge controller 100 amp charge controller 
so that will flip off and those are really easy because when they flip off you just flip them right back on um, if you need to I mean obviously you want to find the problem of why it flipped but you don't have to worry about replacing fuses so that's really nice so anytime you wire from the battery up especially when it's higher power you want to make sure you have a fuse or a uh, or a circuit breaker I prefer the circuit breakers now something about the circuit breakers this is running from the battery side out of the end to the inverter and stuff so 12 volt uh, car circuit breakers are just fine you know these are car circuit breakers and they're 12 volts but they're 300 amp and 100 amp that's fine but from the solar side you can't have a 12 amp you can't have a 12 uh, volt circuit because I have like a hundred volts running through the other side so you have to have a special circuit breaker it's called a DC circuit breaker just like these are so they're not auto circuit breakers they're specifically for solar or you know you have to make sure they're at least equal to the volts you're bringing in mine are 200 volt but they're 30 amp on the other side and that's where my solar panels run into that and that makes it also easy where I can just flip the switch and turn the solar off before it gets to the charge controller so when I disconnect the batteries I don't have to disconnect the um, solar from the charge controller I can just flip the breaker disconnect the breaker uh, at the breaker and then I don't have to worry about rewiring that stupid solar charge controller so that's pretty nice I need another 40 I have a little fuse down here for my little um, you can see right here see that little fuse um, right there inline fuse that one is to my um, 40 uh, amp charge controller and I'm gonna go ahead and replace that one with a breaker just because I think they look neater and they're more cool but anyway so that's a uh, protecting your your system that's important to do you don't have fires or anything else it's a little tight under here but uh, basically that's my rover 100 amp it's huge actually 100 amp charge controller and that's for the big solar array and back that's for the 1200 watts or 1260 watts of solar coming in it's both in parallel and series so I have 20 amps coming down in parallel and then I have you know um, 7 or 80 volts coming through and this MPPT charge controller takes those extra volts brings it down to 12 volts for the battery and takes all those extra volts and turns them into amps you can see I have another charge controller right there that's for my front array these are running you don't have to parallel these or anything like that you can you don't have to run them together or connect them each one is just independently connected to the battery and each one has its own brain that tells when the batteries are full to adjust the charge of your battery so they don't overcharge but that one's a 40 amp one up there that controls the two front solar panels that were originally there so I have two different charge controllers and um, I put them underneath and I put this board here and I connected it to the wall because these are pretty heavy that that one right there that big one is about 23 24 pounds and that little one is really light but the big one I wanted to make sure it didn't rip out of this wall right here so I put everything in the way it should go and it turned out pretty good actually um, then I have my Bluetooth connection but yeah that's the underside and then I'll show you where the inverter is here in a second now this converts all the solar into 12 volts and puts it into the batteries and keeps the batteries nice and safe is what it does okay I'm gonna take you into the uh, charge controller or to the inverter basically I have the inverter running up in here I put a little hole up here I don't know if you can see it but I put a little hole up here and that with that little hole right here goes right into my bedroom so uh, I put uh, the inverter in my bedroom for easy access and because I think it might get a little hotter down here than it does inside in the summer so uh, you don't want the inverter to get too hot so I put the uh, inverter down these are three gauge wires and they run of course to the batteries all right well this is my inverter it's actually pretty cool it's an Ames power 3000 watt industrial grade inverter and basically the only difference is is it's a little tougher built and puts up with vibrations a little bit better and this is the front of it you have your two GS two uh, power outs 
And then you have a place here where you can hardwire. I'll show you what I'm going to do with that next. I'm going to hardwire a series of plugs for the trailer. So I have different plugs set up on the inverter than I do the AC plugs. I don't want any chance of feedback and I, I don't want to have to deal with it. So I'm just keeping my inverter completely separate. I'm not hardwiring it into the fuse box or anything else. I'll just run hardwire a series of plugs in so I can run them through the living room and kitchen so I can use power at the entertainment center and um, you know I can use a coffee pot or a toaster in the morning without turning on the generator um, oops that was a, a Morse code thing that's kind of cool learning Morse code but anyways um, comes up here oh it has a breaker in there of course AC breaker and the whole bit so protect your appliances here is really nice setup it has like really sturdy connections and uh, really clean and sturdy it has two fans to keep it cool um, I basically mounted this straight onto my uh, you want to keep it out from any moisture but I mounted it straight on top of my uh, right on top of my dresser and then I had the wires are a little long probably about 12 feet you really want to keep it down to 10 but I have 12 feet and then you have the wires that go right into the floor and eventually I'll secure these wires so they're you know like secured and stuff and out of the way but right now they work um, see my dirty socks <laughs> but anyways uh, that's the inverter that's the inverter and I can run a fan in the evening to keep me cool it actually does power my portable air conditioner um, but of course I don't really have the battery, you know, power to run an air conditioner all night. Um, I'd have to get probably four more batteries for a total of, you know, 800 amp hours. And, you know, it's just not worth it. If I need the air that badly, I'll turn on the generator. But, uh, at least I can run the fan. A lot of times just the fan circulating the air is just fine. But this will be great for my entertainment center. I'm going to put a satellite on the roof. And be able to use the satellite system and the TV and everything else to stay fully charged up and run it all day long and put a big 65 inch TV in the living room it should be really nice but all that's gonna run on my batteries um, I thought this would hum when you turn it on but it doesn't it's on make zero noise absolutely zero noise not even a slight hum. It's pretty cool. Well, that's the inverter. Oops. Turn that off. Yep, that's the inverter. Um, but yeah, that's the bottom of the solar system. And this is where all the money's tied up. This is about $700, this inverter. You can get them cheaper, but I wanted a nice one. Uh, it's not the top of the line, but it's decent. Um, the power controller, the 100 amp power controller was another $700. All the wiring, connections, and throw another couple hundred in there. Um, the batteries, if you need a battery bank, that's going to run you, you know, for good AGM batteries, it's going to run you at least a couple hundred bucks a battery, so about a thousand dollars worth of batteries. Um, if you get lithium ion, which I would love to have, but they're like a thousand dollars a battery, so a thousand dollars for a hundred amp hour battery, they last, you know, they can last 10, 15 years. And you can run them down to zero charge, but that's just expensive. I can't afford that. But the AGMs are, are pretty good. Not bad. It's a good a good uh, compromise. But anyways, that's, that's the solar setup. And then I'm going to run, like I said, hardwire my plugs in. I'm going to run the wire underneath the trailer. And then I'm going to put the... I'm remodeling my trailer, actually. But I'm going to put the uh, plugs. I'm going to replace this one with the uh, with the you know inverter plug and I'm gonna put that one over there on the inverter plug in the entertainment center so it should be pretty cool